Hello, this is Watch All About with another watch review, and in this review, we're looking at one of the latest uh, uh, models by G. Gerlash, uh, a, a Polish watch manufacturer who uh, specialise in pretty affordable mechanical timepieces. So, this is their latest one, and it is called the PZL37 Lush. Uh, very Polish sounding indeed, um, and it is a uh, an aviation based watch so uh, we have a nice shout out to the plane that it's dedicated to on the back um, so let's uh, discuss uh, what kind of watch this is for the price so it'll cost you uh, 1950 polish zloty which is about 385 pounds um, obviously that's probably a little bit more than um, g girlish's usually are and that is mainly because it is a mechanical chronograph so uh, the movement within it is the Siegel ST1902 which we have seen a, a number of times before in affordable watches uh, and that, that is primarily the reason why it's a little bit higher in price uh, size wise it's uh, got a, a fairly good uh, size to it it's got a diameter of 43 mil so I have a, se a seven and a quarter inch wrist has a diameter of 43 mil, uh, a height of 13 and a half millimeters, and a lug to lug, width, lug, to lug length of 52 mil. So it certainly uh, looks the piece on on the wrist. Uh, it's not not that small really. It's uh, you know for an aviation watch, it's probably a, a reasonable size. To go with that, uh, those dimensions, it's also got a weight of 94 grams, and again. That's primarily going to be because of the mechanical movement that it's got a fairly good weight behind it. Feels good on the wrist. Feels good quality. Okay. <clears throat> Other specifications include a water resistance of 100 meters. So nothing too crazy or exciting there, but you have a, a bit of protection, which is good. Uh, you also have two years warranty uh, in case of any uh, faults or anything like that. So that's good. Um, the strap is 22 mil wide at the lugs reducing down to 20 mil at the buckle. Okay, so let's go through each individual aspect, um, starting off with the, the dial. Okay, so um, personally, the, the design isn't, to me, isn't the greatest. I mean, I'm not too excited by it, that's what I'm trying to say, uh, but it, it, it does a very good job. It's nice and bold, simple to read as well. Um, I think one of the, the primary um, features of it is this massive rehout which is an internal um, spilling, uh, spinning bezel, which is a, a nice little touch. Um, go all the way around. So that's got quite a nice silky feel to it. It doesn't have any clicks or anything. It is literally just just a, a smooth glide. So that will uh, uh, help you with uh, any sort of timing you need. Um, we have also in a classical aviation theme, uh, just these bold white numerals. And these are all... Um, loomed as well as the uh, the triangle at 12 the hands main hands are loomed as well and the running seconds hand is loomed so have a look at the the full written review to have a look at that loom picture uh, obviously legibility is great because it is basically black with white print uh, on top of it we don't have any um, applied elements uh, to the um, to the dial nor are these sub dials in a different layer level or have any sort of uh, engraving to it so it is very plain and simple and you know it does what it needs to do very uh, very simply so uh, in that response it's a you know it's a good solid dependable watch but for me personally probably not quite exciting enough um, so yeah I mean we have uh, these sub dials we have a, a chronograph minute hand on the side and then the running second hand uh, on the other side at nine uh, skeletonized hands so although although they have parts missing they are of a design that you know, they're still uh, bold enough to be able to read, uh, still remaining legible, so that's good. <clears throat> Moving on to the case then, um, it's uh, primarily brushed apart from the, the, the bezel, as you can see, side um, is uh, polished, and then the uh, pushers and the crown, as well as this uh, other crown at a 10, that's also polished, and then just the, a very slight ridge around the case back is also polished and then the rest is all brushed finishing very good uh, as i've come to expect from g girlash <clears throat> nice uh, sharp lines here you know showing a uh, decent um, um a 
uh, decent machining. Uh, the finishing is all nice and uh, um, like it exact as well. Uh, the hands, uh, the uh, the crowns. If you can see, this one's unsigned, but has good grip. And then here we have the a nice deep G Gerlash logo engraved on the end there. It's obviously hand wind as um, it is only hand wind, so you just give it a good wind there. Using that crown, and then our pushers provide decent feedback when when used. Nice click as well. So uh, looking onto the case back, nice uh, detailing with the plain engraving. Uh, it's not too deep. Um, in fact, you know it's 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 quite light uh, engraving, but it it's got good um, good amount of detail to make it still look pretty impressive uh, when you look at it. And then we have just some various details surrounding the outside as well. Okay, moving on to the strap then. Um, I really really like this strap. The leather, the quality of the leather is very very good. Um, it's very supple, very soft as well, and you can tell that it's very high quality leather. So um, I've really uh, you know, really enjoyed wearing this watch. The holes are nice and big, so it's really easy to use as well. We have a big pre pre V uh, buckle, uh, which you know gives quite a big chunky manly kind of appearance to it. So two keeper loops as well in this kind of rustic kind of feel of the leather. So it does match the uh, the watch nicely, um, and it's just really soft. So it's very good quality. Uh, we have this buckle. Uh, which is entirely brushed to um, to sort of match the case with the, the G Gerlash logo just engraved on the side there. So that's a that's a nice little design touch. Uh, so yeah, the leather the leather strap is uh, is very uh, impressive. <coughs> okay, so let me just get the macro lens on then, and we'll have a look at it in even closer detail. So, let's start off with the dial. I'll give, give it a quick wipe. So here we have the logo printing, and oh, my mistake actually. We do have some very, very minute detailing to the subdial. So this is the uh, chronograph minute hand, and this is the running second hand. As you can see, they are on an ever so slightly lower level with a, a teeny tiny um, concentric circular pattern to it. So that's, you know, it's interesting uh, detailing there, despite it being very, very difficult to see without a macro lens on. Then we have these uh, numerals all printed. It's an applied solitary applied triangle at 12 with uh, some decent loom on it. Have a look at the second hand, as the uh, chronograph second hand as well, so that's nice and red with a white tip. What else have we got? Got some details down here. Mechanical chronograph. I'm not sure what wudud pawnee means. <laughs> 11 I assume means uh, 11. Oh, it could be water resistance. Uh, and then made in Poland at the bottom. So then we have these details around the outside. Uh, a printed minute track on the uh, internal spinning rehout. And you can see the uh, nice uh, exact printing work on the um, outer minute track as well. <coughs> Moving on to the case then. So we have this, if I give it another quick wipe we have this uh, polished side to the bezel then that meets up to this uh, brushed side of the case see the brushing is all nice and uh, well done good finishing and then we have these sharp well machined uh, corners of the case as well looking at this crown here this is what controls the uh, the rehout nice and easy to use moving on to this side we have our pushers <coughs>
and our main crown with the G Girl Ash logo. Very deeply engraved on that. So the case back. <coughs> Have these uh, very uh, intricate engravings of the plane, which is nice, just shame it's not that tiny bit deeper. But it's still very accurate and very nicely done, nonetheless. There we go. So moving on to the the leather. As you can see there, we have a nice, thick, juicy grain to it. Very good quality. Got big holes as well. And on the underside, we have nice, soft, tan underside to it. No printing, actually. Surprisingly, there's no like logo or anything on the underside. And then up on this end, we have our keeper loop. Some decent stitching on it. And our crown with the G-Girlish logo engraved on that. Okay, <coughs> so we've been through uh, all the different uh, aspects of it. £385, I mean, yes, it is quite a lot of uh, money. Uh, but... Uh, as is always the case with G-Girl Ash, you are getting a very well made timepiece. Uh, the looks, to me, don't quite call out to me, but obviously that's just my personal um, personal feeling, personal opinion. What I can say is that you're getting a very well made uh, watch with, uh, you know, with, with high quality components as well. Uh, so yes, £385 or 1950 Polish Zwati. Don't forget, you are getting a... a mechanical chronograph so mechanical chronographs are always much more expensive than normal in fact i'd be very impressed if you could get a decent one for you know for 200 pounds so uh, you know you, you're looking at that as a base price so for for a decent well-made watch you know 400 pounds probably not too uh, uh out of the uh, out of the ordinary to to be honest so the price is probably on point okay so this was the giga lash pzl 37 yosh and that's what you're all about.